If there's one thing that the last two years have taught me, um, it's how incredibly strong the so social pressure or social influence or something like that is on humans by other humans, right? It's, I mean, it's yeah. like, I just, I, I, I frankly did not understand this. This is, this has been a huge lesson for me. You know, I, I want to kind of follow up a little bit on something you said in your acceptance speech. Um, and it, it has to do with how you understand the stories we tell, the importance or the value or the role of the stories that we tell ourselves about ourselves and the world. And you make this distinction, you know, between stories that are ours and stories that come from outside and, and how that and how these stories impact our emotions. So I want, this is a very interesting perspective on, tell me about this. Yeah. Well, I was thinking, you know, I was, I was going to receive this award, Heroes of Intellectual Freedom. So I was trying to think of what is intellectual freedom? What does that mean really? So I started thinking about the intellect. And I started thinking about that the intellect is not a reliable narrator. That's what I decided. And that intellectual freedom is only a, really freedom if we have ownership over our intellectual process in the first place. So what I mean by that is, and, and, and something that's not discussed often is the realm of the emotions and the role that that plays in intellectual freedom. So I saw a bumper sticker one time. This just came to me before I was receiving the word. It said, don't believe everything you think. And I think that's important to remember, something to remind ourselves. So when, I, when I'm talking about feelings, when I have a feeling, it's a, the, the feeling, it's basically alerting me something's going on. I don't know what it is because the feeling doesn't have a language. The feeling doesn't, it is in the thought process, just a, a, a basic feeling. It's not good or bad, but it alerts, it calls attention to our intellect. It kind of says, hey, there's something interesting happening over here. Or, Ooh, something doesn't feel good. Come check this out. And then our intellect comes in and tries to, it acts as a translator and interprets that feeling and, and tells us what's going on. Oh yeah, I'm feeling jealous. Why? And then we explain that feeling or we assign meaning to it. And sometimes the intellect gets it right and sometimes it doesn't. In the case of this ideology, at Smith, I had a feeling something felt bad about this ideology. And I was told, my, my, my intellect was fooled because my intellect was convinced by the learned uh, faculty and administrators at Smith, that the reason I was having this doubtful feeling that something was off was an evidence of implicit racial bias. That my feeling of, of something not quite right with this ideology was actually evidence of the ideology itself. And so my intellect was fooled, and I went along for a while trying to suppress the feeling, therefore. After a long time of wrangling with my own mind, and seeking outside sources, I came to understand that the reason I was having a bad feeling about this stuff was because this stuff was bad. <laughs> um, but before, prior to that, I thought the reason I'm having a bad feeling about this stuff is because I'm bad. That's basically what the ideology says. And so that's why we must be wary of the intellect. And that when our intellect interprets a feeling for us, we have to be sure, we're basically telling ourselves a story about that feeling and we need to make sure that the, that story came from us and not someone else, not Smith College. So Smith College, had I had effectively allowed an outside authority to hijack my intellect and interpret a feeling for me that was not my best interest. We live in an era of censorship and disinformation and it can be really hard to know what's true and what's false in this information climate. To get honest information and insights you can trust, join us on Epoch TV. You can sign up for your 14-day free trial at ept.ms slash free trial yan. That's ept.ms slash free trial j-a-n. 
And so I think many of us, this is not particular to this ideology, many of us have been telling ourselves stories that don't belong to us since birth. And that is culture plays an influence. Like you have these feelings because or who who to love and how you should love and what's funny and what's isn't, what what isn't. I mean, I think I've definitely had the experience where I I find something funny, that's a feeling, I just laugh. Um, and then my intellect steps in, so, oh, no, 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 you're not supposed to laugh at that. <laughs> you're not supposed to laugh at that. You're not supposed to find that funny. And then I try to supp- suppress the laughter. As a spiritual seeker, as an artist, as an anthropologist, as someone who's very curious about psychology and other people and myself, I've worked for a long time to try to examine the stories that my intellect tells me which are oftentimes in response to an emotion I'm having, and tried to suss out, did that story come from me? Or is that somebody else's? Did I just unconsciously adopt somebody else's interpretation there? And tried to push out what's not mine and develop my own story that works for me. And that process that I was already doing and that some of us have already been doing for a very, very long time, that is intellectual freedom, or that's how you get to intellectual freedom. What I learned at Smith, and what I learned in thinking about intellectual freedom, is that freedom is not something that somebody grants to you or gives to you. It's, it's, it's something you do, and it's something you practice over and over again until you get it right. And it's, it's a journey that starts at birth and goes until we die. That's freedom. And those of us who have been on this journey for a long time, we, we cherish the freedom because we had to work for it. It's not easy doing that stuff. And I think this, these past two years have really forced our hand here because I, the question that has been burning in my mind for a long time is why do some people stand up and others don't? And this answers that question for me which is that some of us have been working on freedom for a long time and other people, others of us have not. And so now the time has come and you can't just suddenly go from zero to nothing. Some of us were already free or already working on freedom. And so when the time came, we were able to step up in a way we, we had already prepared for that moment. Maybe freedom is like a muscle, right? You have to kind of work it, right? To... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, and, and, that, and that's interesting because there's all sorts of good good analogies. The other piece, though, that's very interesting is, of course, you know, and I, and I remember doing this myself, right? Of course, we, we hear people give their perspectives on things, and sometimes you hear a really good one, and you're like, okay, I'm going to take that for myself, right? We make our choice to to bring in because we we find the idea intellectually attractive or you know, there could be, there could be many reasons, but so the, then we make those things our own. They come from outside. As a kid, we probably do it because it's our parents and we, you know, we, we look up to them. Yeah. But with this, with woke ideology, it's kind of, it, it sort of just demands that its story be the one that's accepted. Either you do it volitionally or it will be done against <laughs> your will. It has that feeling. Is It's like that, right? That's, that's, and that's just interesting in this model that you've that you've described here. Um, Yeah, well, it's almost like the woke ideology, if you don't do it, then that's proof of the ideology, right? Like if you don't participate, you're just proving this ideology. It's tautological, yes. It's tautological, right. right. And it's a potentiated version of something we've been doing all our lives, like cultural influences, influences of, of teachers and adults or whatever as we're growing up. Yeah, this is like... So in some way, we've been preparing for this ideology. In some way, it's like we already have that tendency in it. But, but you're right. There's something a lot more demanding about this. And the consequences are not just loss of internal freedom, but actual material fallout. You will lose your job or you will be socially censored if you do not go along with this. <laughs> 